Hey what's up everyone it's your girl Brain Shanae and today I'll be sharing with you the best books I've read so far in 2022 by Black authors so please stay tuned. And I am back and also if you're new to my channel welcome if not welcome back. So like I said before I'll be sharing with you all the best books that I've read so far this year in 2022 by black authors. Now beside me I have 13 books right here. Now there's a lot more that I've read by black authors this year that I absolutely loved and enjoyed but if I did all the other books we would be here for a while. So I tried to dumb it down a little bit so I picked 13. At first it was like 30 but I was like no nah, I can't do that to y'all so I numbed it down to 13 books so the first book that and I'll just let y'all know all these are five star reads so just to let y'all know so the first book that I've read in 2022 or one of the books is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Austin this book was amazing and I know that a lot of people said that Amari went through a lot which she does in this book but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and when I read this I felt everything like I felt everything that she was going through mentally mentally and what was happening to her and you know based off of who she is um and the magic that she has and how she's treated differently but I think of it as like and this is a middle grade I think of it as like life is it's like an obstacle course and it's not only an obstacle but it's also a competition and it's not comp it's not just competition with everybody it's you're also competing um, against yourself and with this she's not competing with herself necessarily but at the same time she is because she still has to overcome all of this at the end of the day and I think even as like yes this is a fictional character but just think of it as in a, a real life experience that all every single one of us goes through something and it is up to us how we want to or like whether we want to sink or swim and of course we want to swim now on occasion you know we might dwindle in the water a little bit where we may drown but then again we get back up and we start swimming and I feel like that's what's going to happen with Amari um she goes through a lot like I said but there's light at the end of the tunnel you know there's there's some greatness is going to happen so I really enjoyed this book and I of course like I said it's a five out of five stars I I know that it's a lot when you read this and you're figuring like, okay, when does she catch a break? Um, and to be quite frank, I feel like in life, we never catch breaks. There's always something coming unexpectedly and we can't control it. And I think I love the re, uh, the re like how realistic it is uh, when it comes to Amari and what she's going through and the journey she's taking. Um, so I do, I appreciate this book and I loved it. If you haven't picked it up, I suggest you do so because it's really good. The next book, which is like every book that I've read by these authors, they gave me some type of, they provided a lesson, um, which I love when I read. There's always a lesson that can be learned. Um, so the next book that I read is The Merciless Ones. This is the second book to The Gilded Ones. This is the first book. And this is by Namina Forna. <sighs> really good. Decca. I feel like it's like she's discovering herself. Yes, yeah, she discovered herself, you know, herself a little bit towards the end of the Gilded Ones in the first book, but this one it gets deeper. Now it's like she tries, she's now trying to find herself and she finds herself in in a degree, but at the same time now she has to decide who to trust and who not to trust. You know, because she's very gullible at this at this stage right now. Um, because she's trying to figure out which side is which, who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. One person says, no, this person did this to me. And another person said, no, this person did this to me. So there's always two sides to a story. And at first she stuck only to one side, but then, uh, then a lot of things were being revealed within this book. So it's like a roller coaster when you read this. And I really enjoyed it because I love the re how realistic it is. Like a lot of these books, there are so many realistic experiences that we all have or may have experienced or experienced some things. And with this in particular, now it's about, okay, I have to decide who, who I'm willing to trust, who can I trust, who has my back 100% you know and you know she dwindles for you know from who you know like tug of war 
which side am I going to go? And that's where Decca is right now in this book. And I'm really looking forward to see what happens next because she's starting to learn things because she was also naive. And I feel like a lot of us can be at times, um, especially if you haven't been in that situation before and you don't recognize it, yes, you're going to be naive. Now, if it happens a second time, maybe, maybe not. Third time, nah. You, you gotta know, you know, you can't be na naive no longer. But um, I really enjoyed this. Like if you haven't read The Gilded Ones, pick up the first book, then pick this one up. I don't know when the third book comes out, but I, <laughs> I'm excited for it because I want to know what happens to Decca and her discovery. So yep, the merciless ones, y'all. Definitely pick it up. The next book that I read, which I read closer to the beginning of this year, which was Akata Woman by Nettie Akorfor. And we are, this is the third book where we're still with Sunny and her friends. And there's more adventures that to be had with, uh, with this book, with this series. And come to find out, there's going to be a lot more books in this series. A lot, there was a lot of assumption that was just going to be three books, but there's going to be a whole lot more. So I'm really, really excited for about that fact, because I was a little sad. But then again, at how it ended, I'm like, okay, there's something more for us to read. And just having Sunny and the friendships and relationships that she's starting to have, I really enjoy it wholeheartedly. Um, and the different elements with the creatures and stuff like that within this book is just amazing. So if you haven't read this yet, if you haven't read all the other books, pick them up because you do not want to miss this. Nettie Corfor is an awesome writer. And I feel like if you want an introduction to her writing, I think like Akata Witch. Um, and I have Akata Witch, Akata Warrior, and Akata Woman. I think it's a great introduction um, to her um, writing style. Um, but yeah, Akata Woman by Nettie Corfor. If you haven't read it, pick it up. It's amazing. If you haven't read any of the books, pick them up right away because it's amazing. She's a genius. Genius. Just absolutely genius. Next book, which I did a whole vlog for, I'm not going to go deep in depth with it, but I'm definitely going to give it some praise because it was really good and it touched me and it made me cry towards the end because it's all about when you have that choice, what choice do you make? If you have an option of choosing someone or yourself, which, what do you choose? And the book that I'm talking about is Soul of the Deep by Natasha Bowen. This is the second book. The first book is Skin of the Sea, which I also did a whole vlog for as well. I'll leave my vlog stuff up above um, so you can check it out. But with this, we're still following Semi. But this time, the journey is a little bit different. Um, but at the end of the day, she's able, like every, every tribulation and every type of issue or problem that she has um, that she has faced head on. She, she, you know, she was relentless. She always wanted to help others and help herself at the end of the day. And when she was able to have the opportunity of Yamoja coming up to her and asking her, you are provided a choice. Um, and, and stuff like that, that like blew my mind, like saying like, you have a choice to, you know, to still remain a mamiwata and stuff in that nature or you can do this I'm not going to go into because I don't want to spoil it for anybody if you still haven't read Skin of the Sea. Semi uh, is the main character in the books both of the books um, but there's a journey for each book and how the book the first book ended it picks it up in this one. Um, there's a lot of broken hearts there's a lot of like like questioning and wondering what your what semi's future holds and this was just a great conclusion to that um i'm a little sad like i would i i hope that there will be a third one but how it ended i don't think there will be but just from reading skin of the sea and soul of the deep by natasha bowen i do plan on reading more work uh and more books by natasha like hands down it's auto buy and like i said like all these books i'm introducing to you all and that what i've read so far this year are, are auto buys for sure like 100 percent um but this book got to me and it definitely was it made me think about my life and my choices because every there's choices and sometimes it, you know sometimes not sometimes there's always some type of consequence you know no good deed goes unpunished as they say so you know it's just it, you get hit regardless if you do good or whatever so like I said, 
I enjoyed this book. If you haven't read it, I suggest you do so because it's amazing and it has black mermaids in it. But also it provides a content note in the beginning, which I'll read to you right now, just to give you a heads up. So it says, before you begin reading, please be aware that parts of this book may be triggering for some readers. Soul of the Deep blends 15th century history with fantasy, and there are depictions of violence, enslavement, and death. And that is also for the same for Skin of the Sea, the first book. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that with the content, uh, with the, you know, the, the notes with the content and everything like that. But pick it up if you haven't. As you can see, I tabbed it up. I also tabbed the first book up, um, which is like right behind me, actually. Let me share it with you now. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. And I think someone took the tabs off them, but it's cool. So this is Skin of the Sea and here's Soul of the Deep. The, both of the covers are beautiful, of course. And it's just great works all around. And I believe if you start with Skin of the Sea, it also has a content note in the beginning as well, saying the same thing. Before you begin reading, please be aware that parts of this book may be triggering for some readers. Skin of the Sea blends 15th century history with fantasy and there are depictions of violence, enslavement, death, and suicide. So just to give you a heads up, but they're both good. <laughs> so if you pick them up, let me know down below in the comments or if you have read them, what were your thoughts? But I just really enjoyed it enjoy both of these books by Natasha Bowen and I cannot wait to see what she brings out next but there is Soul of the Deep and next which I really loved and enjoyed um I wish it did it got better marketing and stuff for it but it's okay I'm still gonna read read the second book which I cannot wait for and is one of my anticipated reads of next year 2023 and that is The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport I love this i really enjoyed this this is an adult fantasy this is not ya yes it may the cover may look like it's it's ya but it's not it's adult just to let y'all know right now <laughs> but hands down this had me going everywhere <laughs> like everywhere and like if you want something a little softer I feel like another like another book that is sort of like this one but it's completely different um and that is Blood Scion by Deborah Fallier or Fillet um so these both have similarities but this like I said this is an, this is an adult book and this is for young adults but it's amazing both books are amazing but I'm gonna get into this book so even when I read the synopsis let me just read to you all because I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but I'm just going to read the synopsis. So it says, it's all about blood. The blood spilled between the Republic of Marine and the armies of the Blood Emperor long ago. The blood gifts of Marine's deadliest enemies. The blood that runs through the elite war houses of Marine, the rulers of the tribunal de de excuse me, dedicated to keeping the Republic alive. The, um, excuse me, the blood of the former Legatus commander, Vern Amari, murdered. For his granddaughter, Akina, the only thing steady in her life was the man who had saved Maureen. The man who had trained her not just in martial skills, but in her, but in harnessing the blood gift that cursed, that coursed through her. So literally with that blood gift, she cannot let anybody know that she has it. But she's still at the end of the day trying to figure out who murdered her grandfather. So then it goes into who trained her to keep that secret, to keep that a secret. But now there are too many secrets, and with her grandfather assassinated, Akina knows two things, that only someone on the tribunal could have ordered his death, and that only a Praetorian guard could have carried out that order. Bent on revenge as much as on discovering the truth, Akina pledges herself to the Praetorian trials, a brutal initiation that only a quarter of the aspirants survive. She subjects herself to the racism directed against her half Canadian heritage, and the misogyny of a society that cherishes progeny over prodigy, all while hiding a power that, if found out, would subject her to execution. Or worse. Akena is willing to risk it all because she needs to find out who murdered her grandfather, and then she needs to kill them. Maureen has been at peace for a long time. Akena joining the Praetorians is about to change all that. Magic and technology converge in this in the first part of the stunning debut duology where loyalty to one oneself and one's blood is more important than anything you see how that how that synopsis just summed up the book it's it's really good 
so freaking good like and that's just my opinion now it may not be for everybody but it was for me because it took me on this journey because yes this is about blood but it, but it reminds me of how I like in reality like I'm, I'm I'm a black person and and I'm a black female I'm gonna constantly and consistent consistently go through something whether if, if it's not every day it's every other day because of what I look like you know and yes this is just about blood and it's also about her magic but at the same time it's giving you that reality of like how the world is towards people that are different you know and literally I had to like I had to discuss that with my daughter like even with um the year of 2020 um I had to discuss it with her because she asked me about it uh especially what happened with George Floyd and I had to tell her there's people in this world that will not like you just and and not like you because of the color of your skin and she did not understand that she's like why can't everyone love everybody everybody now like I wish that was the type of world that we that we that we are living in or that we could see us living in in the future but as I was just talking to her in my head I'm thinking like I don't know if the world will ever be like that and now this year has come up it's 2022 and nothing hasn't changed and it's just now as a people we have to face reality what do we do do we just let this continue on how do we stop this cycle how do we stop it completely and that's like a huge question like how, where do we begin you know and we have to there's definitely how we, we need to restructure the government we have to there's a lot of things you know but anyways like I really enjoyed this book because it talks about like when I said about the whole sink sink and swim type of deal that's like she has no choice there are some people in this world that have no choice but to swim regardless of their circumstances because they can only do that because there's somebody else is depending on them to swim they have literally so that also is the case with this book and like I said before each and every book that I have read this year gave me and, and provided a learn a lesson that has that that needs to be learned or or whatever or just brought to your attention on what you have to face on a regular basis and so I really enjoyed this book I know there's some people that didn't but I really did and like I said this book may not be for everyone but it was for me and I really appreciate the book and I really appreciate the story that was told in, in these on these pages so I'm looking forward to the second book in E. Davenport you're an auto buy um and I'm just I cannot wait for more but here's that and so like I said comparison with the blood trials we have blood scion which is another girl who is living who uh, her she's taking care of her grandfather and then with this book it also has um excuse me it has content warnings in the back or not in the back it has a little content right here in the front so it says this book is inspired by the real life horrors endured by child soldiers and the war on children in particular and therefore tackles themes of war violence and sexual assault please read with care so i'm glad that a lot of these books um are now having content warnings and content notes in the very beginning of the book to let the reader know and be aware of what they're getting themselves into um so this was just really good but we're dealing with this book we're dealing with sloan and blood trials we were dealing with akina we're dealing with sloan where she has the pot the power of fire but she can't let people know and with this when she turns 15 she's legit legitimately have to become a soldier they have no choice and one of her friends in the village who she really like deeply cared for decides like we have to you know we have to escape but there's a penalty for that so if you even when you turn 15 and you try to escape it you're you're executed you're you're killed on sight and that was just just going through that scene in the book it was it was like wow wow because this is also a realistic thing there are children soldiers child soldiers in this world there there are and they go through this they have to kill their loved ones in order to survive which that's what Sloan had to do in order to prove her loyalty her best friend you know in order to prove her not only to prove her loyalty but also hide who she is and what magic that she has that running through her veins um 
so she no longer will see her grandfather and her friend you know she will no longer and there's a lot there's a lesson to be learned in this book about appreciate the people that you have in your life because you don't know how long they will be in your life and you don't know the next time you will see them um and that like I'm not trying to get emotional but that just that's so realistic because we don't know we don't know the time or the hour we don't know when we'll see you know if we'll ever see our loved ones again like if they walk through that door to go to work we don't ever know if they're going to come back to that door um and just for going through this journey with sloan it was a lot but it was a such a great book because it wakes you up it makes you think about your life and how you live your life and how you 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 spend time with your loved ones and the people that care about you and the people that got your back 100 that, that constantly has your back regardless of what decisions and bad decisions you, you make they have your back 100 percent. and so for this i really enjoyed this of course and I know some people really didn't care for it, but I really didn't hear a lot of people talking about this book, raving about this book, because when I saw this cover, I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks like Avatar, which it does. It really does. But this is Sloan right here. And just look at her braids. Like, it's just a beautiful cover. And if you follow Deborah Filet's IG, she also revealed the cover for the second book. And it's, it's fire. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, if you haven't picked up Blood Scion, I suggest you do so. It's such a great book. book. It's such a great experience to go through with Sloan. Yes, there are bad times, but she's also not only dis not only trying to figure things out about the disappearance of her mother, but she's also finding herself. And I think even I'm about to be 30 years old and, and I don't really have everything like like down pack on who I am as a person like I have a sense but as far as what I want to do with my life I feel like for me it's I want to live it to the best of my abilities I think about how precious life is and how literally you know sometimes it can be draining but then you have to also be good to yourself and also realize life is too short and so that's how I am right now at this time. Um, and I, I'm embracing that about myself and I'm starting to love myself even more. There were times where I didn't. And I feel like that's the same way with Sloan. She didn't really love herself at the time because of, you know, her mom's disappearance. And she think her mother's dead. And then also knowing this gift that she has flowing through her veins, coursing through her body. And, and so she had issues about herself, but I think closer to the end, she started in like loving herself um, and, and letting her powers take flight, you know, in a sense, even though she still had to secretly not, not let them know her powers, but eventually she just let it go. She's like, I'm letting it go. So she let her powers go and now they know who she is and, and, and everything in that nature. But I really enjoyed this. So I definitely suggest you pick it up. The next book, which is by an indie author, which I absolutely enjoyed. Um, I loved each character. I loved Aaliyah. I loved Eric. Like such amazing, amazing book. And I'm looking forward to the next book. But like I said, this is by an indie author. And this book is available, um, especially even on Audible, I believe. Um, so you can get this on Audible, Amazon, or you can go to her website as well. But I really enjoyed this. And this is like a comparison to like um, the Vampire Diaries and like the originals and stuff like that. So if you're into vampires and a little bit of romance and stuff, this is for you. So the book is The Eel's Key, Winter Blood Book One. This is by DM Laurie. And this book, oh, I said book, this book <laughs> was phenomenal. I enjoyed every bit of this book with her with Aaliyah being a witch and Eric being a vampire and the relationship they were having amongst each other like mm, mm, mm. so good so good I did eat, I even did a book review about it which I'll leave up above so you gotta check it out but it, let me just read the synopsis let me just let me just do that so it says after a failed attempt to end her life which there is some content warnings, which let me let me say that. And I'll say this again, that there's a lot of books coming out, which gives you content warnings. So it says, 
Warning, this story contains content that might be content that might be troubling to some readers, including but not limited to depictions of and references to death, assault, suicide, cutting and self harm, vivid nightmare imagery, childhood trauma, depression and anxiety. Please be mindful of these and other triggers and seek assistance if needed from the resources below, which he gives you resources as well. But so I'll just give you FYI, there is content warnings within this book. So it says, after a failed attempt to end her life, Aaliyah Carter leaves her childhood home to become a waitress in the state's most prominent hotel. Traumatized after her mother's death, she silently grapples with her pain until she saves the life of a mysterious man who reveals to her a world of true magic and terrifying wonder. So just to let you know, she doesn't even know that she's a witch. Aaliyah does not know that. So it says, Eric Winter is a vampire ward sworn to protect the creatures of the city after centuries of heartache and loneliness he is finally ready to end his existence when fate brings them together Aaliyah is irresistibly drawn into eric's world where witches and vampires are more than childish bedroom uh, excuse me bedtime stories excuse me together they discover she too has an incredible power running through her veins a power so rare every creature in the city will kill to get their share of it and it says, will Aaliyah allow Eric into her life and into her heart? Will Eric be able to defy destiny and keep those he loves safe? The Eel's Key is a dark and magical story that will keep you spellbound long after the last page. Which it does. It definitely kept me spellbound. And I'm like, DM, I need your second book. I know you're working on it, um, but I, I need it. So I'm really looking to reading the second book of the Eel's Key because it's really good. And if you, I don't want you to miss out on this. It's such a great book. I, every time, it's just a page turner. I wanted to know more. And if you listen to the audiobook, there's different narrators for each character, which I really loved and enjoyed and how DM put all that detail within her book and within her narrators. I just loved it so, so much and appreciated. I really enjoyed it. It felt like I was there just in the background, like I was a wallflower just in everybody's conversation in this book. And I just loved it so so much so if you haven't like read this book haven't like heard about this book here it is so you know what to do since you have this information but definitely read it if you haven't the next book which this uh, this character so much reminds me of storm and is her the power of from her hair in general um and about just the beauty of your hair and loving your hair just so amazing and I believe this is possibly going to become a movie which I'm really excited for so it says and Yekka and the Academy of the Sun her superpower will change the world by Tola Akugo Woo. sorry if I'm not saying the author's name correctly I do apologize but this is the first book I'm really excited I saw the cover of the second book and it's like greenish I'm really gonna like oh I'm excited for it but this book is about a girl who has powers within her hair and you see where I say storm is because just look at her hair like look at it and then even when like if I read the synopsis which says Anyeka has a lot of hair the kind that makes strangers stop in the street and her peers whisper behind her back at least she has Cheyenne her best friend who couldn't care less what other people think Still, Anyeka has always felt insecure about her vibrant curls until the day Cheyenne almost drowns and Anyeka's hair takes on a life of its own, inexplicably pulling Cheyenne from the water. So she saves Cheyenne from the water with her hair, which she doesn't even know about this power. But when she uses this power for her hair, it drains her as well and makes her very ill and just really, really sick. So... Her mom takes her home, which let me continue on. So it says, at home, Anyeka's mother tells her the shocking truth. Anyeka's sci uh, psychokinetic powers make her a Solari, one of a secret group of people with superpowers unique to Nigeria. Her mother quickly whisks her off to the Academy of the Sun, a school in Nigeria where Solari are trained. But Anyeka and her new friends at the Academy soon have to put their power to the test as they find themselves caught up in an epic battle, one that puts the future of all Solari at risk. And then it goes into questioning about like her father and stuff like that in that nature. Like her mother was keeping the secret from her regard like about her hair and her powers that she could have. Um, and literally when she started using when she used her powers to save her friend Cheyenne from drowning, that's what happened. So there's a lot like where literally she discovers her powers 
And yes, she has some insecurities about her hair, which this is like another lesson learned. And I wish I had a book literally like this when I grew up and uh, when I was growing up and when I was a kid, because I looked at my hair because my hair like it was in a fro and stuff like that. And I looked at it like, like, as it was a bad thing, like my hair wasn't neat or nice. And in and, and that nature, because when I was a kid, you know, when you on TV and stuff, nice was sleek hair and straight and flowy and stuff like that. So I literally as a kid, I told my mom I wanted to put relaxer in my hair and I had done that for like a couple of years. Um, and then once I hit, once I got out of high school and into college, I started being on my journey of being natural where I didn't put chemicals in my hair anymore, like a relaxer and stuff like that. I stopped doing that. Um, and then I think I started being, becoming natural in 2012 actually. And then, you know, I started just wearing box braids, a protective um, hairstyle for my hair. Um, and then just last year, I decided to start my lock journey. So I've been doing this for literally a year. Um, you can it, like last year, you saw how my hair was really short. And now it's it's definitely growing. And I could tell because it was at an awkward stage and I had to like get used to it. But I having locks is, is the best decision I've ever made when it comes to my hair. And I just love my hair and I'm embracing it. Like I tell my daughters, I tell my daughter and my sons, like their hair is beautiful. Their hair is beautiful. And it's lovely. You know, like I'm giving them that confidence because they need that because sometimes somebody will tell them like, oh, their hair is this and that. No, your hair is beautiful the way it is. Don't tell any, don't let anybody tell you any different. So for this one, yes, Anyaka goes through that stage where she's questioning if your hair is beautiful or not. But then once she finds out she has powers and stuff and her abilities, she starts embracing that power because Yes, she literally has power in her hair, but even as a real human being, we have power in our hair too because it means something to us. This is our crown. You know, we don't let nobody touch our hair. No, 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 no. Do not touch my head. No. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. So, like, I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, I wish I had a book like this when I was a kid where it talks about embracing your hair and, like, your hair, your hair is your crown. Like, I didn't really read. There wasn't a lot of books like that, but I do appreciate this and, um, it was just a beautiful middle grade. So I'm really looking forward to the second book in this. The next one, which I did, this was one of my book club picks and that is The Final Stripe by Sarah Al Arifi. This was a fantastic book, of course. I really enjoyed this book. It had me on a roller coaster and still it's literally about self-discovery on finding yourself and who you believe in and who to trust and how to it change the structure of society. And I love this book. Now, I, I, I could go rambling about all these books, but I want to get to them all. I know that this video is going to be long. I'm not trying to keep y'all here too long. But so I'm going to briefly go through the rest of them. But this book has me on a, like, had me up and down on a roller coaster in a good way. Um, because it makes me think of how our world is today and how society uh, needs to be restructured. And for this one, it digs into that on how the society made people feel and how there were certain classes that were built in order to keep this one class as more superior than others. So I really enjoyed this. If you haven't picked it up, I suggest you do so. And the second book, I saw the cover and it's gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to reading the second book. Uh, this was like I said, my book club pick for my members on my channel. If you would like to become a member, you already know what to do. Just go to my channel and hit join. And you can either be a ray bearer or you can be an origin. Either way, you, can, you are still part of the group discussions. Um, but each month we pick a book. Um, and of course, next year, we're gonna, I'm, we're gonna be reading the second book together since we read the first book together. So I'm really looking forward to the second book. But if you haven't picked up this book, I suggest you do so. The Final Strife is amazing. The next book, which I did a book review for, which I'm not even going to get into a lot with this book, because it's just, it had me in tears and stuff. And it has me realizing about how the world is and how society and what this year has done to women um as far as our rights with our bodies and we have we we should have the right to do whatever we want with our bodies because it's our bodies and it's our decision and it's our life and you know you know we should have a say so but this year they you know they're taking our our rights away 
of course, um, as of 2022. And so it's really convenient how this book came out literally this year when this right like months prior to what had happened uh, in the, the middle of this year. But that is Take My Hand by Do uh, Dolan or Dolane uh, Perkins Valdez. Such a great book about a nurse um, goes to see two kids and she's asked them questions because the uh, her boss told her like, yeah, these kids need to be on birth control. And when she visits these girls, one is not even on on their period, like I haven't had a period. The other was not even old enough to have their period yet. And they're and they're trying to give them birth control. And they never even had a boyfriend or nothing in that nature. And it's like, why? But you are, we, we know why. We know why. And so this book was just, sorry, I'm just reminded. This book had me in tears because society is still doing that today with a lot of women and kids. And they're not giving them the, they're like taking away their choices and their rights, which they have this year. They really have. Uh, the society and the government that we live in has done that. But some people may agree, some people may disagree with me, but I, I feel like they have, they have, they have taken our rights away as women. But, but I like, I have done a review for this. I'm not going to get into much longer because it, the lo the video started getting longer and longer and I don't want to do that because, but that just lets you know how much I love each and every one of these books because I can go on a ra I can just, just ramble and ramble on about each and every one of these books. But I did a book review. I'll leave that up above so you can check it out. But this book was amazing. The next book that I read, which this came out, I think last year, and that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I love me some N.K. Jemisin and it took me a while to read this and I don't know why but I finally read it and I loved how we were in New York and in the different boroughs of um of New York so we like it we had we had the Bronx we had Manhattan we had Queens we have Brooklyn Long Island Staten Island and each and every borough has a different uh avatar in this book where they're facing something that's trying to destroy the city itself um and I really so much I know there's some people that like yeah about this book but I absolutely enjoyed it um I oops gosh sorry I see where people were coming from but I feel like since I've been to New York and I've been to the uh, different boroughs besides uh I haven't been to the one in Staten Island it's the only, only borough I haven't been at um but for me no like for me that traveled to New York and stuff like that and been to different boroughs it felt like I was home even though I never lived there I've only visited there a few times and it felt like home to me and I don't know why it, it I don't know how to explain it it felt like I belonged there in a sense like like I told my husband I'm like Keandre, would you ever want he's like well are you crazy I was like yeah I know the the, the price the, yeah it can be unaffordable for us but like me reading this book it made me feel like I was home even though I'm not from there I'm from you know Columbus Ohio but it made me feel like I'm I was home and there hasn't been a lot of books that has done that to me so if you haven't read this I suggest you do so and then also the second book of this came out this year so I definitely will be reading that possibly next year. no I am going to be reading that next year because it's not obviously I cannot fit it into this year <laughs> the next book I read for Black Awinathon and I'm really excited to continue on with this series um and that is My Soul to Keep by Tanner Redu and this was just so freaking good but now I know why people are pissed off about Jessica <laughs> like I now I get it now I get why people fucking hate Jessica I wouldn't say hate they fucking annoy like, like they're really annoyed with Jessica like really annoyed and now I'm understanding why like I got the gist of it but I, they said like it, it gets worse each book and I'm like oh no Jessica and it's like everything that has happened is because of Jessica and I'm like girl when are you gonna learn stop <laughs> but I really enjoyed this um uh, the first book that I read by Tenry Du was The Good House, which was which was really good. Um, and then um, Bree from The Lock Petition and Bree from Bree Sheree Reads um, and Erica from The Broken Spine had told me and um, Emma Ray from Emma Ray Empowered has also brought up this book and always, always talked about Jessica. And I was like, I felt always out the loop. But now I'm in the loop. And now I understand why people are so like annoyed with her. But I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five out of five stars. And I cannot wait to continue on and read the second book, which I have on my shelf. So such a great read. 
And lastly, the last book of this pile, I promise, I know this video is long, I'm sorry. Um, but this, like this author, S.A. Cosby, is an auto buy. So I read Razor Blade Tears last year. And so I had to read on. I had to read some more by S.A. Cosby. So I read Blacktop Wasteland, which was so freaking good. It's like, it, it was like you're on a heist. But with the main character, he has his, his, his uh you know his back against the wall you know trying to figure out how to pay the bills and how to take care of his family how to take his wife take care of his wife his, his you know a son all that um and so he's thinking of okay i need to do this to get make some extra money to make some extra change and that's what this is about but things take a turn when the people the stuff that they had taken from was just the person was, mm -mm, was no good they took from the wrong person um so that's how the gist of the book goes but i can read the synopsis as well so it says a husband a father a son a business owner and the best getaway driver east of the mississippi Beauregard Bug Montague is an honest mechanic, a loving husband, and a hardworking dad. Bug knows there's no future in the man he used to be, known from the hills of North Carolina to be the, the beaches of Florida as the best wheelman on the East Coast. He thought he left all that behind him, but as money gets tight, his carefully built new life begins to crumble. Pushed to his limits by poverty, race, and his own former life of crime, Bug finds himself drawn exuberantly back into that world. When a smooth-talking former associate comes calling with a, with a can't-miss jewelry store heist, Bug feels he has no choice but to get back in the driver's seat. And Bug is at his best when the scent of gasoline mixes with the smell of fear. Haunted by the ghosts of who he used to be and the father who disappeared when he needed him most, Bug must find a way to navigate this blacktop wasteland or die trying. Which this is a realistic story because when your back is against the ropes, it's like you have no choice in order to pay your bills, in order to provide for your family. That really is how the shit goes. And you know, that's really sad because I feel like there should be programs and stuff for people that if they have hard times, there's some type of funds or something they can do um, in order to get that. When they're pushed against the ropes, when they're ropes, when they're trying to, you know, they're trying to have their own business, but yet and still... They, oh, they got bills to also pay for at the same time. And especially nowadays, everybody's utilities and stuff may be going up and their Wi-Fi and internet and whatever has been crashing power grid and all that stuff. So I get like, I get it. I get it because my utility is going up and we're like, we use less energy too. Like what the fuck? But especially our electric, my God, don't get me started. But I love how realistic this book is because I feel like everybody at one point in time has gone through something and your back is against the ropes and it's up to you how what do you want to do like I said sink or swim and for him like I said he has no choice but to swim because he has a family he needs to support and take care of so I really enjoy this too so if you haven't picked up any books by S.A. Cosby I suggest you do so because he's a genius a genius but that is it <laughs> that's I'm, I'm not gonna keep y'all any longer those are these are all the books the best books i've read so far of 2022 by black authors each and every book that i've read this year has taken me on a journey and these particular books took me on a journey and a life learning journey for me as well and made me observe myself and my life and how i want to live my life and how i want to you know take care of my kids and stuff and raise my children so yeah Woo. but here is all the books the best books of 2022 that are read so far by black authors right here but I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching everyone and please stay healthy and stay safe. See ya.